Welcome to this series on internal assessment. What I'm doing here is I'm trying to answer all these questions. If you go to the forum, you're going to see that there's heaps and heaps of questions. So if you go to IB Survival and you go down and look at what, what are the questions all about here? IA, guide, failed results from my IA, chemistry IA, what defines an IA, IA. Uh, you can see that by far the biggest questions that students have are to do with internal assessment and even if you go to the special website that only IB teachers have access to you get the same thing even the teachers are asking IA, IA, IA. So what I've decided to do is show what I do for IAs. I'm just going to go to my Google Classroom and I'm going to just pull up the IAs from my students and just show you where I'm at. Now these resources here I'll make available on my website. I'll just put them there. I'll put the links to that in the description and this template especially IB doesn't like templates or checklists but I have had this checked by a very experienced IB internal assessment examiner we've gone through this and these are really the main things you need to get and I'll be I'll be working my way back to this quite often so I'm going to put some anonymous reports out there I'm hoping that all of you will watch it and I'm talking to my students here I'm putting them up anonymously you're gonna to have to go and look at each other's and get good pointers from each other like I normally do in class. Okay, the effect of ripening on the iron content of an avocado. Now, let's see what we've got here. Um, so we've got here one, two, three. Again, as I said before, um, if I just look at the data in general, uh, yeah, we've got a Beers curve here, which is great. Um, and I'm assuming a negative control wasn't needed, zero, uh, because you would have got zero um, or some 100% uh, 1.0 absorbance. Um, that needs to be discussed somewhere, probably, and it might have been. And so you've got the Beers law here, absorbance versus concentration got to get rid of that um, dot to dot. I think you've probably chosen a line graph. Make sure you do a scatter in Excel and do the line of best fit. And uncertainties here. You need to clean a lot of this up. Um, decimeters cubed. Um, you need to write, uh, make these, where is that? I can't see where that is. Is that here? Um, here again, get your units. Uh, clean up the units there, uh, plus the uncertainties. Uh, so that will, and then I need to see where it is, and I think we've done that just here. So this one's quite nice. Uh, I don't, this seems like to be a repetition, so I think maybe get rid of the top one. Um, I love the annotations there. All right, it's communication. All right, so a lot of the marks go for communication as well. Uh, can I see anything right center? right middle, right outer? So that's nice. You've actually got some sort of um, relationship there. Okay, um, and so that's kind of worked as well. All right, um, so safety considerations. I need to see some references on there. Uh, and you told me what to do in a little bit. All right, so referencing could be done better as well. Let's just get up to some main points here. So the data there. Now, um, we'll get into design, because design's a real issue for this one here. Um, and I know this, this student went through a lot of pains to get this information because there was a huge processing uh, technique which required actually burning uh, down the small sample to nothing before they could actually do this the spectrophotometry. Um, so you need to design your experiments a lot better. So this one is good with the data and the experiments finished, so well done. Uh, I think for behalf of everyone we need to talk about design a lot more. Um, here, fresh ripening and ripe. Um, I have to go back and check the method whether you actually took different uh, samples through going to, uh, you haven't actually told me how it was done um, so I'm assuming uh, that you got the same avocado and that you took samples of it and did it at uh, some time and then some time and then some time uh, and to make it continuous you really need to say um, this is like uh, one week uh, and this is two weeks. All right. Um, so get rid of this discontinuous data and turn it into continuous data. All right. And uh, to to do this well, maybe you should have done this over uh, five periods and um, I don't know five 
for a month is enough, probably is. And then maybe put it in the freezer uh, and had like um, six or seven samples, really tiny samples labeled in the freezer and then you could have done the whole thing at once um, and even got your friends to help you perhaps and, and, and got it done in like, believe it or not, one hour. Um, um, we've got pretty nice class, I'm sure a lot of us would come in and help just for a lunch time to get it all done. Um, so you've got to work on your design so that you can actually get it done. That one has got issues whether it's continuous or um, discontinuous data and it's an issue that I can't tell that very clearly straight away as well so that's an issue as well going from my memory. Now initially um, I'm thinking the effect of ripening on iron as soon as I see an or inorganic uh, mineral. I'm thinking, well, there's not going to be any effect at all. It doesn't matter. In a thousand years from now, if I put it in a bottle, the iron content's not going to change. Um, but you've got a reference here. Uh, mineral content of some unripe fruits in Nigeria. I'm thinking, oh my god. It's like some, all the scams come out of Nigeria. Um, How's it possible to change your iron content? So if I look that up, it does actually say that. Alright, it does actually say the iron content of the fruits are changing. Now how is that possible? Um, this is the problem, not having full access to that. So I'm hoping you've got a full access to that. You've gone through the librarian or some other source um, and got the full article. I'm assuming the only way that can happen is they've picked the fruit off the actual tree. So the trees actually sat there and increased or decreased in, in minerals uh, through the stem and whatnot and then it's picked uh, and that's how the iron contents the min inorganic iron minerals can change um, I'm assuming it must be from that article uh, initially I wasn't sure whether it was just the iron getting reduced or oxidized uh, most likely uh, somehow uh, and so that's changed but I can't tell that either because you don't have your method there and you don't I can't tell what the reactions are actually doing which is really critical for your introduction uh, and I really should lay off on that for a little bit until we've done redox reactions and that's going to help you a little bit but I'm worried that that's not really what's going on that the, the chemical reactions measure iron doesn't matter what oxidation state it's in. So it's really really important that you perhaps read the chapter while you're doing the IAs and definitely read up on exactly what chemicals are going on, what the chemical reactions are. Um, and so there's, there's, there's an issue there all right, with um, what is actually going on, what's the chemistry of this and, and how was this obtained and how did you mimic it. So uh, it's really important, it's good that you used research uh, and you based it off that, but I don't think you based it off it enough. Um, well, if you really want to get good marks, you take someone's research and uh, you actually just sit there and say what, the, what you did and what, and what, and what they did and you get your method and go one, two, three, four, five, and you say, well, I didn't do two, but I did three because of this, 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 this. That is brilliant, all right? And that'll show the person, the, the examiner or whatever, straight away uh, that you're actually basing this off research uh, and you actually know what you're doing. Okay, so um, a lot of this here, I, I, this, this class is the biology class, and most of you are doing the second sense biology. You like to get carried away with the biology. I don't need all that. Um, you could really condense this down um, to very, very little. Everyone knows you need iron. Two sentences maybe will be enough. Let's get to the chemistry. Okay, so in and of itself, this experiment uh, may have various issues with the design and how it's carried out and what what it's actually achieving. And you're definitely going to lose marks for. Um, the experimental design but you can make a comeback and pass uh, by showing how this here uh, just in of itself you're just detecting iron levels and how well you can detect that and you can make, make uh, uh, really limit the amount of marks you lose for design by doing the things I've just talked about and explaining uh, how that how this has occurred and how you've come to these results chemically how that's possible um, which which I think possibly would be if if the, the technique for somehow just is exclusive to the ions or if you somehow manage to get the fruit and pick it off at different times off the tree which is probably unlikely uh, or if you manage to ask the you go to different uh, 
different places that pick the fruit at different times, uh, like an organic shop that has it fresh or not, that's probably unlikely as well. So that being said, don't worry too much about it. Um, continue on and, and do all the other stuff. There's plenty of marks to be had with all of the extra analysis done uh, and you'll be okay. If you found that helpful, please like it and put some comments in the comments below and please check out the other videos for more advice.